Welcome to the Zone of One in Fevers! Okay, today we have a guest who specializes in working with health and wellness professionals, life coaches, and healers, guiding them in the art of speaking to elevate their visibility and amplify their business message. She empowers her clients with automation techniques, system building strategies, freeing up their time and resources for more joy and achieving the envisioned time and financial freedom. The Empowerment Zone. Please welcome to the show, Diamond Trip. Thank you so much, Brittany. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> We're talking about um, speaking to elevate your business. So what is the difference between just talking to somebody like, hey, you know, my business is super important to me and here's why versus like, well, what do you teach exactly? Like, what can we get from that to tell people because you know even coming up with the elevator pitch can be difficult especially I think especially when you're really passionate about it like if you give me a script like I can memorize that script but I'm telling you something I'm very passionate about that is super important to me and trying to get it in that small of a bite <laughs> and then ex you know express the passionate side without freaking you out without you going like dude like calm down and I personally teach a framework so that way you can plug and play the information versus like memorizing. But to your point, speaking to get visible is the best way to grow your business. Like, yes, we're speaking right now. We're talking about business. This is actually one of the, the ways that I talk about speaking to get visible is being on other people's platforms. So podcast opportunities, people have paid speaking gigs out there. There's Black Speakers Network. Like I'm pretty sure if you Google paid speaking opportunities, you could find them. And so those are opportunities for you to be on someone else's stage. But what comes with being on someone else's stage is like, it's their show. So if you have an offer that you really want to make, you have to then tailor it to the confines of whatever, you know, that person's stage is versus uh, I talk about, you know, being on other people's stages. But what I mostly talk about is creating your own stage. When I started to do this in my business by hosting masterclasses, and right now I'm hosting my first five-day challenge, which is really exciting. Um, when you create opportunities for people to come into your world and connect with you and get immersed in your story and what it is that you do, and they leave with an idea of how you can help them, and you just you know, your offer is a discovery call session or something like that. Like the people who book that call, the people who end up on your calendar at that point are going to be qualified leads because they've experienced your genius. And at that point on the call, it's really just getting them a little bit of extra support. If you promise that, like if you promise a strategy call, give them some tips, but also seeing if it's a good fit to do more work together. So mm -hmm. when I talk about speaking to grow your business, I'm talking about putting yourself and your authenticity at the forefront of your business. Because I work with a lot of solo entrepreneurs and we feel like we have these businesses and it becomes this like persona and profile, like we have to be the business, but it's oftentimes just us. And people have to know, like, and trust you to do business with you. So when you have like these circumstances where, where you're, never mind. We're just gonna please cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I totally do that all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, okay. Now I'll just be honest right here. So I haven't done somebody else's podcast. I've been asked to, and I'm like, I need to do that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was even talking to my daughter and like, you know, I'm always about all about just like, just do stuff, be brave, like get crazy. You know what I mean? Like we only do this life once. Like, don't be afraid what anybody else thinks about you. Who cares? 
they don't mean anything in the whole grand scheme of things. Like if they don't like you, they weren't meant to be in your life. They're not part of your, you know, ordeal. So, but for some reason I have a block and, you know, it's funny. I actually scheduled one and had it all set. And now I actually have a valid reason. My um, car got lost. You know, I got a flat tire. And then when, um, it was the spare. We were going on the way to fix the car and the spare was on. The spare went flat. So we had to leave the car and then drive to go get a new tire. By the time we got back, someone had vandalized the car. They broke in, busted windows, busted everything up. And so it, this was my interview day and I completely forgot about it. I'm like, you know, talking to cops and like insurance and all this kind of stuff. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I show up everywhere early. I'm yeah. the 10 minute early woman, like everywhere, my entire life. And, and I, I didn't call, I didn't show up, nothing. And I'm like, no, I have a valid excuse, but I'm like, at the same time, you know what? I'm blocking that. I'm purposely blocking something because I'm afraid. And what am I afraid of to go on someone else's? Because I am passionate about what I've created. I've worked really hard for this. Yeah. You know? I'm like I do want to share it with other people because I think it's beneficial. So what am I doing? But um, anyways, that's my little, <laughs> Most of I the haven't time, gone just... on anybody else's yet. Ah! Oh my gosh. Most of the time they're just conversations. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's what I, I'm like, we're just having a t- conversation. I'll edit some weirdness out, whatever, but we'll have a good time. Don't worry about it. And then what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. That's so yeah. exactly what you're talking about that mindset block that comes because it's one thing to have it and to do it for other people Mm -hmm. and you're in kind of the driver's seat but when we think about like oh it's me answering the questions like most of the time when people have guests on their show it's like a 80 20 so you're used to asking the questions and letting the other person talk, but the hesitation comes up because you're like, oh, I'm filling in the 80% now, unscripted, conversationally, yeah. where I can ramble and possibly say other things. And your mind blocks you from seeing the opportunity that's available. And mm-hmm. mindset is one of the one of the first things. Like I talk a lot about tech. We talk you when you um, when we were talking about what I do, I do talk a lot about tech, but what comes with tech? People are scared of tech. So mm-hmm. I have to first sometimes get them like into the courage and the confidence of like pushing a button to mm-hmm. sign up for something so we can jump into it. But it's it's the mindset that holds us back. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, because well, I was having a conversation about that. Um so your mind tells you all sorts of things and we can tell our minds think our mind things as well. You can actually like, I keep saying this one, this, um, there was this, a study they did on anxiety mm-hmm. and what they discovered was anxiety and excitement feel exactly the same in the body. The only difference is what your brain is telling you, but you can tell your brain what to think. So you know, you, I'm excited. Whoa. I'm really excited about this. Like, instead of I'm anxious and I can't do anything and I'm too scared. You just tell yourself something different. I think it's funny. I'm the one that I advocate all this. I teach my kids all this. And I'm like, there is some block, but there's something where you, your brain is trying to help you. So it sees going on someone else's podcast as a danger. So it sets you up purposely. So you don't get on that show. So you have to talk to you like, well, what's going on here? Why are you so upset? Like, what are you afraid of? What's going to happen? The setup's the same (laughs) on my end. It's going to look exactly the same. It's just going to be a different person, which I have a different person all the time on the other end. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And even with what you were saying with like how excitement and nervous energy shows up like it's really two sides of the same coin when I learned that I was like oh I can trick my brain but even further than that like have you heard of the law of assumption Hmm. no tell me about that okay this is see this is why I say coaches need coaches my life coach is the one who told me about this law of assumption and so she had me watch a video that explained it and so to condense that 20 minute long video so my life coach used to be um like a 
like a quantum physicist or something very like sciencey yeah <laughs> like in the physics and stuff so she comes at the woo woo as we jokingly come call it from a more science perspective which my logical brain appreciates Absolutely. and so I love that <laughs> yeah so she said uh so the video basically said like when we imagine something in our minds like if we were to imagine ourselves going into a closet closing the door if we visualize and imagine it for long enough we'll feel like you know what it feels like to be in the closet like it'll if we close our eyes it's you know dark it's it's mm -hmm. as if we were in the closet and so the law of assumption kind of plays around with as we come back to what is like our brain tells us you weren't really in the closet but our whole entire body spirit like we felt like we were in the closet and so the law of assumption plays around um the reason why she had me look into it is because I've always we always hear about affirmations mm -hmm. and it's like we know that they can't fix anything like everything and so we know that they can't fix everything and so when she when that was one of the first suggestions that my life coach made <laughs> was to do affirmations in the mirror I was like affirmations <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. so that's what this is what I'm saying this is why I appreciate that she's a scientist because she comes at it from like the science perspective of like this law of assumption and you know the the forces of physics and and it's like okay yeah, what he just said makes sense because I, if I envision myself in a closet, I feel like I'm in a closet. So you're telling mm -hmm. me if I say I live in my dream home and I pay my bills with ease and joy, like I will manifest that into happening. Okay, I'll give it a go. <laughs> so that's interesting. That's a conversation I had with my kids too. So what I tell them is that words are spells. And so whenever you put words out, you're putting power into that. And the reason that a spell works, whatever you want to call it, is because you get that in your mind. You're like, okay, I live in my dream home. And what does that feel like? And so you're making it as though you are there. And so you start making progress in that direction, which makes it happen. So it is you the whole time, but yeah. it's however you have to get there, but programming yourself with it. And, you know, yes, I am. I'm paying bills easily. Yes, I'm. And it's so I saw somebody say Kat Von D actually was on a a podcast because I guess she recently became a Christian and she's she was saying how all the spirituality tools were were crutches and they didn't really work. And I'm like, well, I understand what you're saying because I've seen those people. They're like in a great deal of pain, like my back doesn't hurt. I feel great. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, that's fake. They do hurt and they're just not admitting it. So you're right. That's not a place that it works, but it is scientifically shown meditation and affirmations do work, but you have to use them. You have to program your brain to be thinking like, what does it feel like to live in a luxury, um, you know, apartment or, or, you know, condo? What does that feel like? Because if you don't feel like that, you're not going to start working towards that being the fact. So even if it's something as little as, you know, I went to Lush and got, you know, a couple bath bombs. Well, now I feel really luxurious. And so now I can take that a little bit further. I'll do a self-care day and just, you know, have the whole day. So it is, but it gets you going so that you do keep up the momentum. That's what, yes. that's what I, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like prime example, the, I live in my dream home. I pay my bills with ease and joy. So I have lived in this apartment for the past three years going on for now. I've been trying to move for two of those years, but <laughs> I have blackout curtains in my apartment because I want, we have like a sun facing and I keep the heat out <laughs> because mm -hmm. I'm like, I like it cold in my apartment. And so even though the seasons change, I keep the curtains up because I'm like, I put the, I put them up. So might as well keep them up. And when I think about my dream home, it's never really like the five bedroom house with the backyard is six acres, like none of that. 
when I think about my dream home, I think about the feeling that I feel. It's one mm -hmm. of peace. I think about not necessarily what the living room will look like, but I think about how bright it is and how it feels. Mm -hmm. And so for the first time in three years, when the season changed, I took down the curtains and it lets in so much natural light, so much so that I'm waiting for Black Friday so I can buy myself a standing desk because that's another thing that I want in my dream home. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put it in the natural light because that is a, like, that's what I envision my dream workspace to be like. So I'm, mm -hmm. like you said, it's putting it into action. Your words are spells. I'm going to have to teach Taylor that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, be careful what you say. If you tell yourself I'm dumb all the time or, or you know, oh man, I'm, stu well, sometimes we make mistakes and that's the other big thing. I, you know, failure is your path to success. That's I tell my kids, I'm like, do not get upset that you fail ever because now you've learned something and now you can get there. And, or you learned, Hey, that's not for me. My daughter, <laughs> my daughter joined girls on the run. I don't know if you've, it's a running program. She discovered she hates running. She never wants to do it. A day in her life. Yeah. I'm like, that is a great way to learn that that's not for you. You know, and that's, and that's okay. You don't have to run like all the other, you know, girls. That's okay. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so either way, you learn something really valuable, but failure is always, you know, I just had a guy on the show talking about how to use adversity to make you successful. Yeah. Like, that's a big thing because a lot of people, they get to this point or, you know, I don't know. We all do it at different ages where everything becomes so overwhelming. Life is so painful and we don't know what to do with it anymore. And you have a choice and some people don't continue. And so, you know, what is that, that we all have that we decided, you know what, regardless, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. That's a whole different attitude. Heck, yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> and we're taking, yeah, we're taking that failure. We're taking things that happen to us. And we're like, yeah, I'm going to use whatever rocks you threw at me to build my beautiful little cottage. You know? Yeah. Two, two of my favorite things that I always love saying are to feel the fear and do it anyway. And Absolutely. what you were saying about excitement and, you know, nervousness being of the same coin, like that proves that. But even what we're saying right now, Clarity comes from taking action. And the yes. example I always give is like the force choice close example of like, you have a big date, you have a big event, you go to the closet, the infamous closet, whatever that is, if it's a drawer and you pick out the outfit, you put it on, you go in the mirror and you're like immediately, mm, I look good or mm, 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 mm. No, I don't think this is for today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clarity comes from taking action. That's true. That, well, that's why we have clothing crises. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have to try everything on to go, oh. <laughs> right. I even minutes. started filming myself going like, I thought that looked good, but whoa. <laughs> 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 Once I see it on film, I'm like, ah, that is a completely different animal there. Yeah, pretty right? funny. That's another thing too, like in this virtual space, <laughs> putting something on in the mirror and then coming to Zoom camera with it. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done that a few times. I'm like, I really thought this looked good all this time. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> what have people been thinking? Of? Who cares? <laughs> right? What pe that's a phrase that I learned. What other people think of me is none of my business none of my I business. was like yeah this mm -hmm. it is none of my business <laughs> yeah so I've had people you know do you want me to tell you what so-and-so is saying behind your back no it doesn't make any difference it's not changing anything I'm gonna do and you know what the I guess it would make me feel sad or something that somebody said something derogatory but brain yeah that's not my business <laughs> obviously you know eh. Who cares? Because there's always going to be someone. There's always going to be critics, especially if you're doing anything with your life. If you're doing anything at all, there's always going to be people. And my dad taught me, I guess he was teaching me to be political. I don't know. But he always taught me, you always want people to either love you or hate you. Because you don't want them anywhere in between. Because if they're in between, they're not paying attention to you at all. Yeah. Dang. It's true. 
We don't I'm like, like to think of it as black and white as that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well I'm like I wonder how much that has to do with human design I don't know if you've done any human design I'm you a do. manifester and like I'm like I have a repelling aura and so I tend to get a lot of people that just are super offended by things I say and and they can't handle being around me <laughs> I'm like, I'm like hmm, I wonder if how much that has to do with me being a manifester I wonder if my dad somehow knew kind of something like that that's funny that's on my to-do list. I finally, I've been hearing about human design for a long time and someone finally sent me uh, a calendar and I was like, oh, is it like a quiz or whatever? And they were like, yeah, it's just your birth date and your time and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. So I need to find my birth certificate on the to-do <laughs> list. Got it. <laughs> it will be interesting, actually. So I just had someone on the show that does that. She actually does um this is really cool stuff she does the human design she goes over it with you she like in depth and like totally goes over it with you but you should totally do it I'm finding it really interesting I've been like watching videos and researching here and there and I'm like oh things are making a little more sense like why I've created this and what I'm doing I'm like oh interesting and then it always comes back yeah you need to speak publicly <laughs> <laughs> as you create your own stage with this podcast <laughs> you know what's funny is I had zero intention of doing that I was just going to do audio I'm like podcasts are not video nobody has to see me ever like I can just hide in my cottage and nobody ever we can just talk yeah that worked out really well for me mm -hmm. super well <laughs> Yeah, because when you add the video, they really do. It gives them, like, I didn't know that podcasts were video until I had a meeting with someone and they were like, YouTube podcast. I was like, I'm sorry, you said what? They said, what's the thing? What? Can you send me information about this? Because it's not something they advertise. No, no, no. But I think I, get, I don't know. Yeah. But I think video is the, well, people want to see who you are. They yeah. want to know, you know, who is the, this owner? Who is this person? How can I connect to them? And do I connect with them? Like, are they real? And so I was talking to a, another business guy on my podcast and he said, that's because you have to, you have to show your face. Yeah. He's, that's just how it is. Like that's your brand. Even if it's not your name, it's still, you are the brand. Yeah. And, yeah. And there, people don't want corporations anymore. We're just kind of, you know, we want it to be distrust. <laughs> yeah, they kind of did that to themselves. <laughs> like, I know. You know? <laughs> right. But all of us are like, mm, meh. <laughs> no, yeah. thank you. Yeah. We're trusting each other a lot more. Yeah. Which I love, especially, if, you know, supporting so many solo entrepreneurs. It's like, we are the backbone. Like, I remember when I looked up the statistics, I was like, doesn't feel like we're the backbone it feels <laughs> like we're at the bottom somewhere but it's like oh okay yeah I guess I could see from these statistics we're the backbone so you know when people so shop small or support black owned or whatever it is veteran owned woman owned it's like yay yeah <laughs> <Either way. laughs> that's actually this you know the slogan of Zara Laquan is for the people by the people so we're building a community all together individually. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Unleash your potential. Where can people find you online? For sure. So uh, Diamond, I've, been, I've done really good at SEO. So whether you search on Google Diamond Drip Business Coach or Diamond Drip Consulting, I will pop up. But specifically, I use LinkedIn the most. So if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, just search Diamond Drip. If you want to go to my website, which has all of like my social and even a calendar time to book an appointment with me, uh, that is diamonddripconsulting.com. And what does a um, consult, an original consult, does that cost? Oh, no, no. It's just a free consult. I don't have anything on my website that's like buy this because I don't work with everyone I need to make sure that you're committed and you're like I like to sit down and get to know the people I'm about to work with <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's very individual one-on-one -on -one. yes yeah yeah and your podcast so tell us about that what is that about and when is it on and where can we find that 
For sure. So uh, the name of the podcast is Diamond Drips Discussions. Again, SEO. <laughs> you gotta have it. Um, and so the whole entire premise of that show, uh, I was driving myself crazy doing a master class every week on Thursday at one over the summer and having guest speakers come during that time sometimes. And I was like, there's got to be a different way. And so I found that not a lot of people were able to make it to set times. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, podcasting is a thing. Let's do this in a way that makes sense. So it's business insights and strategy you need in 15 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. Keeps me from rambling. <laughs> you the information you need quickly. <laughs> um, so that's yes, helpful. diamond drips yeah. discussions. I think that's super helpful. You know, in the world of TikTok and everything, our attention just doesn't stay on anything for very long. I honestly, if I look at something on YouTube and it's more than like an hour, I'm like, oh, oh goodness gracious, that's a lot of my time. Yeah, you gotta get you know settle in. You gotta make sure you got your water bottle full. You're like, I gotta right. get through this for an hour. This is right. This is some. Hey, it better be some good stuff in there. I better be a millionaire after this. Thank you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of my time. Man. <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah. So yeah, things that are yeah, I I do that. I'm like that's what I started doing podcasts ten minutes at a time because I'm like that feels handle handleable <laughs> like yeah. I can deal with that don't yeah. be taking me on these long journeys <laughs> yeah absolutely thank you so much for being here today it was awesome I had fun getting to know you and uh, learning some cool strategies for business I'm so happy that you picked me I know how many applications <laughs> happen so I'm just really thankful for this time here with you you're awesome Oh, thank you. I think you're pretty awesome. Everyone, I will put the links in the description box below so you don't have to go searching. Um, just, yep, look in the description. You will find everywhere. And she's on LinkedIn, everyone. That is the big one for her. So uh, thank you so much, Diamond Drip of Diamond Drip Consulting. Okay, today we have a personal finance expert, an IRS enrolled agent. She's a radio host, an author, and she has a passion for simplifying tax complexities. Christine is on a mission to help self-employed individuals, gig workers, and indie contractors navigate the IRS landscape with confidence. Her latest book, How to Avoid Troubles with the IRS, offers essential tax tips and actionable advice tailored for entrepreneurs and freelancers. Now, I know all of my independent contractors out there are going, ah, not math, but you know what? This is so important. I had to have her on. Conversations with Indie Authors. Please welcome Christine Stevenson to the show. Thank you, Brittany. So glad to be here, hoping to educate the audience and make it simple. <laughs> oh goodness I, th I this is like I was telling you before this is one of the biggest complaints I hear from all my creatives is this portion of their life they're like I love being independent I love being an independent contractor yes. but oh my goodness the math it hurts <laughs> yes yes and I'm I'm independent I'm self-employed also so I get where people are coming from from that from that side of the brain I don't know if it's left <laughs> brain or right brain but the other side of my brain is equally engaged as well so the numbers thing isn't quite so much of a big deal for me but I really love educating people on and it's actually it's simple it really is simple and we tend to make things complicated for ourselves yeah that makes sense yeah. what would be the top tip that you would give someone in this situation Yes. Great question. So the best thing that someone can do for themselves, if you are your indie contractor, you're in business for yourself is open a business banking account. That is ser seriously, that is the main thing that you, you can do because so many people that are self-employed, they don't separate their personal money from their business money. <laughs> and come come tax time, it's oh, it's a mess to figure that out. If whether you have a CPA or a bookkeeper doing it for you, or you're trying to figure it out yourself, mm -hmm. it's a huge mess because now you have to unravel an entire year's worth of bank transactions that are in and out of your oops, in and out of your your bank account. So by yeah. opening a business bank account, everything's in that account, and it'll be easier to figure out. So that's like the number one thing I would have people do. 
I think it's I think it's tax tip number three in my actual book. <laughs> so, but to open a business bank account, you have to have a uh, business EIN. license. No, actually, yes. yeah. Okay. So there's there's a distinction. Yeah, let's draw that. So okay. you might need a business license for the the county that you live in or your city, whatever state okay. you live in. They might require in my county here in Texas, I had to pay ten bucks to go get a business license. Oh, okay. now I'm now I'm in business, and and the business license you're you're searching, you're doing your name search to make sure that no one else has your name, mm -hmm. certainly in your county or possibly in your state. I'm not sure of the rules, so that's a business license. The, the number that you need to open a business bank account is an EIN, an employer mm -hmm. identification number. You get that from the IRS. It's free, free is a good price. <laughs> it takes about 10 minutes to get it. Assuming you can verify your identity on the IRS website, you, you, you put in your name, your address, your social, bloop, now you have an EIN. And you take that EIN to your bank, to your financial institution, the credit union, and say, Psh, I want to open some business bank accounts. It's, okay. It literally is that simple. Wow. Yeah. It, so, but it varies across the um, United States about whether you need a license or not? Correct. The business license. Okay. That's that's okay. to operate in your, the IRS doesn't care about oh. your business license. That is a, that's a local government thing. Your city, okay. your county. Yeah. Okay, you, you and they vary. That. Yeah, they vary by price because I'm like over here. It's like a two hundred dollars, maybe. Uh, more yes, yeah. yeah. It's, it ain't it ain't ten bucks in New York. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> but in Texas, where I'm at, is ten dollars. So um, where do you live again? Because <laughs> right, Central Texas cost of living is low. I think that's actually a good point too. Is where you live actually that depends on how much you're going to be giving to the government um, for taxes as well. It can. Tax, yes. Yeah. And certainly like, for, that really comes into play for the state tax issues or federal. It's pretty much anywhere you live in the U S but if right. you live in a state, New York, California, Oh my gosh, the franchise tax board, you know, it's like, bleh. so <laughs> um, it's, it's a, it's a tough deal. Ohio, some states, some states drill down into the County and city level. For taxes. Oh. New York City residents okay. have to pay a New York City tax, file a New York City tax return in addition to state and federal. So, wow. Yeah. So you have to have very localized. They want you very localized. Very yes, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It, it, any, any government entity wants your money at some level or another, whether so that's federal or state. Here would be my question. Now what happened? Because you were just said it, like get a business account because you want to keep everything separate. What if you've already tangled it? What if you've ah. already started doing things with your personal account for your business? Now what do you do? Okay, great question. And so the answer is now, today, when you're watching or listening to this, now you know. And so going forward from today, go open that business bank account and start transacting all your business through that account. If you were doing business and personal, oh, shame on you, not the best. But change going forward, you can do that. And that's that's really the best thing to do. And you know, we're coming up on the new year, so that would be a great time to start, quite honestly. So it doesn't matter because, okay, so for taxes, it doesn't really matter, but it does in some ways, because if you have an LLC, aren't you taxed differently than if you're a sole proprietor? Good question. And the answer is no. Okay. Here's, here's, here's a, um, here's what a lot of people don't understand about the whole LLC thing. So you form your LLC with your state. You have to go to the state secretary. Do you have an LLC? I, I don't know if mm -hmm. you do or not. Yes, okay. I do. So you go to your state secretary website and you pay your fees mm -hmm. and you get your LLC uh, designation from the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to get that, you had to have an EIN yes. from the IRS. So you get the EIN from the IRS, you go to the state, and you form an LLC with the state. Mm -hmm. Now, for tax purposes, the LLC is identical to being what we would call a sole proprietor, mm -hmm. an independent contractor. It's the same tax form that you're using. It's the same thing. Sometimes what people get confused on is they form the LLC with the state. And during that formation process, you're filling out the paperwork and checking boxes. You can opt to be taxed as an S-corp. 
Yes. Yeah. So you're an LLC for, for the state and you're mm-hmm. opting to be taxed as an S corp, which is different than now you're no longer uh, a sole proprietor. Now you're not just an LLC. Now you have payroll. It's like you become an employee of your own company. Okay. Right. And so that's, that's, that's the whole LLC thing. The LLC gives you the liability protection. So if someone sues you, they're suing your business, not right. you personally. So, right. So the LLC is just like a sole proprietor. It's a schedule C it's a tax form. Unless you choose the election to be taxed as an S corp. That's a whole different tax return. It has to get prepared. Okay, because I um, a lot of business advice. A lot of people have always said go as an S corp because you get better taxes that way. You you can yes. You really have to run the numbers to see how much you'll save because you're saving tax, but it costs money to prepare the tax return that for the S corp. That's that could be a thousand dollars easily from a CPA oh. or something like that. So okay. you have to look at what are you. You, you got to run the numbers. It's not just a straight, yeah, you'll save more money. So it's is amazing. it a good idea to go and find a CPA then in your state, in your general vicinity, and just have them look over all of your stuff? I, I like to recommend that. It doesn't hurt to go by an hour or two of a CPA's time if you're not sure, because sometimes you you there's different rules of thumb about, well, if I make $50,000, as being self-employed, then I should form, you know, the, the S corp or be an LLC with an S corp election. Or if I make 75,000, if I make a hundred thousand, it's not just necessarily about how much you make that determines to form this or not. And you really, you need to sit down with someone that's a, as a tax expert. I'm not a CPA. I'm an enrolled agent. That's the EA after my name. I, I know about accounting, but I try to stay away from it. <laughs> so I took an hour of, or a, a course, a semester of accounting in college. And, you know, that was enough <laughs> debits and credits. That's all I need. So <laughs> an enrolled agent, I'm a, I'm a tax law specialist. And okay. so I focus more on the tax law, but I understand accounting conceptually, but yes, you could sit down with a CPA and enrolled agent such as myself and tax planning software is a wonderful thing. You can plug in numbers and play with the numbers and find out, well, what could I really save? How much tax am I really saving if I go the S corp route? So I would say, yeah, buy an hour or two of, of a, of a licensed tax professional's time. Absolutely. So here's a crazy question, just out of left field. There's a guy I follow. Um, uh, it, his slogan is go where you're treated best. Um, go, I'm sorry, go where your what is best? Go where you're treated best. Oh, okay. And yeah. So he's talking for businesses tax wise, and he's saying go abroad because you get better bank accounts, you get treated better, you can li- cost of living's less, and you have beautiful places to live. And so that his whole yeah. So uh, then you Maybe? would have to find CPS globally, and does, that seems more complicated. I think. <laughs> well, yeah. If you're a U.S. citizen, um, maybe he is or not. I'm maybe I don't know who you're talking about. And you're living abroad. Yeah, you might have. Uh, lower cost of living in a more beautiful area to live in. And yes, services are generally less expensive. There are many, ta- I'll give you a quick example. There are many tax uh, professionals, preparers, small businesses that hire out the preparation of tax returns to individuals in the Philippines oh. or in India. They're English speaking, they're very smart, they're college educated, and it's very inexpensive to hire overseas people to prepare mm-hmm. returns, the returns come back to the person in the U.S. And as a CPA or enrolled agent or tax attorney, whatever their status is, they they look the return over and then they sign it. And then they're charging whatever they're charging for tax preparation. Right. But maybe it costs them less because they have someone in India or the Philippines doing the, the tax prep versus mm-hmm. someone here in the U.S. So I don't know. I I'd, I'd need to know more about the facts and circumstances of the person you're following <laughs> to really make a good you know, informed opinion on that. But there's lots of issues when you live overseas as an American citizen and how to pay your taxes. Yes. You would have to renounce your citizenship to not. Well, you you file. Um, well, yeah, you'd have to renounce your U.S. citizenship to not file a U.S. tax return. But if you have Social Security that you're looking for, oh, yeah. you know, all sorts of stuff, don't renounce your U.S. citizenship. 
<laughs> well, you, you, what you need, what you need is, is someone that specializes in what's called expat, expatriate issues, an expat tax expert. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. And then, so that would be a specialist. That wouldn't be just any yes. CPA would do that. Okay. Right. You really want someone that specializes in that. I have a couple of people that I'm connected to on LinkedIn that specialize in this. This is their, this is their niche. This is what they do. So. Oh, interesting. It's not okay. what I do. I know about it, but it's not what I do. I stay in my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> that's the interesting thing so it's just like taxes they actually you I've seen celebrities get arrested or yes. you know, uh, because they didn't pay their taxes and I'm like well wouldn't they have a CPA like wouldn't they have someone doing that for them like yeah, what's happening you, you, you would think yeah so here's the thing you you don't get arrested or go to jail for not paying your taxes you, you, and even getting arrested is a little bit of a strong term. You can go to jail for not filing your tax return. That's the thing. If you can't pay your tax, the IRS will work with you. They will. That's the area I specialize in. Okay. That's called tax resolution. If you can't pay your tax and you seriously cannot pay it, you can negotiate a deal with the IRS. It's totally legit. But not filing your tax return, that's, that's not legit. You, they want you to file your returns. Okay. So somebody told me once, I don't remember who, that as a business, they don't have to file taxes as long as they make under 10,000 with the business. Well, no, if you, here's the thing, if you're a business, if you make, and I mean like a babysitter, a dog walker, forget okay. a graphic designer or, you know, an author or whatever. Here's the thing. If you make $400 or more, then you have a reporting requirement. Okay. Now, whether you owe tax on that, uh, you know, who's to say? You might not. And so there's other factors that come into consideration on a tax return, whether you actually have to file a tax return. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty low bar to have to file. It's based on your, your, your filing status, your age, how much income, global income, how much money you're making. So- okay. It's a little, you know, there might be some circumstances. Yes, I make $10,000 for my business and I don't have to file a tax return. Maybe I would proceed with caution. There's a whole lot more to that statement than just the face value of it. But 400 bucks, that's it. That's all you got to make. And you have a reporting requirement. Okay. So that's good to know. Yeah, that was yeah. years ago. Somebody <laughs> just like said that in passing. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder. Like, yeah, I was that true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is that real? I read, I it, I read it online or I heard it. it must be true. It was on TikTok, <laughs> therefore it's true. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was a TikTok man. I bet there is. I'm sure there is. Somewhere. I'm sure there <laughs> yes, yes. TikTok is wonderful for many things, but tax advice. <laughs> Proceed, trust but verify. Yes. I keep saying that my daughter actually wanted to learn how to do stocks. And so mm -hmm. she's been researching and this lady followed her on TikTok and wanted to be her mentor. And I'm like, hmm, let's just go with Maybe. someone that we can research and like yes. find out that they're legit. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Proceed with caution. Holy smokes. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with taxes. Oh my goodness. Cause that can really yes. mess you up if you don't proceed with caution. Yes. And, and you don't want, you don't want the IRS breathing down your back. You don't want to be getting no. those letters from the IRS that say, Hey, you owe $500,000 and you have 30 <laughs> days to pay. Yes. <laughs> Which is legit. I've, I've seen, I've seen that. So, I mean, that's, that's an extreme example, but yeah, it's, yeah. It, it is, it's terrifying. And so people, terrifying. when they get those letters, we tend to not think rationally when we get the IRS letter. Literally, we like break out in a cold sweat. We get mm -hmm. nervous. Oh no, what am I going to do? The IRS is coming for me. We're not, we don't think, we don't think clearly. So is that a good time to hire a CPA? Then? <laughs> well, yes, the time to hire the CPA was before you got in the mess. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. Seriously, if you do, if you are in trouble with the IRS mm -hmm. and you need help, really need help. You don't, you don't want to try to negotiate with the IRS on your own. Not really, because it's not because I'm trying to say, Oh, hire me. I'm great. And I'll help you out. It's because you don't know the, the ins and outs and the information that the IRS is looking at, right. Comparing it to the information that you're providing them. Hmm. And if you, if you don't know what those, those different factors are that the IRS is looking at, you can, you can, you can do yourself a, not a good thing and end up paying more. Like a lot of people get into payment plans because mm -hmm. they owe 
and and the IRS might say, you know, you have to pay us four hundred dollars a month, and you'll be like, oh, okay, I'll pay four hundred dollars a month, but you really can't, and it's it's tight, and you're trying to you know pay your light bill and buy groceries, which is hugely expensive. Well, if you don't know that you can negotiate an, a deal with the IRS to only pay two hundred dollars instead of that four hundred. Mm-hmm. you're paying out money that you can't really afford to pay them. And that's, that's where an expert such as myself or a CPA, a tax attorney, that's where we step in and we negotiate and we help. So is the tax attorney more expensive than a CPA or is, are they, you know, everybody no. makes up their own price. I gotta say, okay. <laughs> yeah. So lawyers tend to, to bill a little bit higher yeah. CPA. Sometimes they charge by the project or by the hourly rate. I, myself, I charge flat fees because I, I have a, an idea of the scope of the issue mm-hmm. and and I, I work in two parts, you know, A and B. A is for everybody, no matter what the issue is, and it's a flat fee. And B could be for everybody, but maybe not. And there's also flat fees there. But my clients, they know my fees up front. There's no second guessing. It's all in a letter. It's all documented. It's, it's no surprise. You need to pay yeah. us another $5,000 <laughs> in order for us to continue on with your case. That ain't it. That's not what I do. Yes. I think we're all tired of that. We want uh, visibility. We want to know what we're yes. getting into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And again, how do you know what you're getting in? You, you don't, you don't know the questions to ask. How, right. How would you know what to ask? So. Right. That's super helpful. So That's where right. can we find you online to get more great information and your book? Yes. Yeah, so my book, uh, you can see part of it here, but this is the actual thing here, how to avoid trouble with the IRS. The 10 best tax tips for the self-employed gig worker and indie contractor is on Amazon. It's also an audiobook. So if you have any of the audiobook subscriptions, Audible, Spotify, Nook, it's it's on like 50 different different channels. You can listen to it. I'm primarily on LinkedIn. And so you can send me a, a, a request or it's Christine Stevenson Seal, E-A. Uh, that's that's mostly where I live on LinkedIn. So when my websites are being built out, I have some, but they're I'm redoing them. So there's no, no, I don't worry too much about websites. Most of my my work, my coaching, and my tax stuff is word of mouth, mostly. So nice. I don't worry too much about websites. Yeah. Okay. And you also do public speaking as well. I do. Yes. Yeah. I love to speak. I just came from FinCon. I was telling you earlier in New Orleans. I was a breakout speaker. I had great uh, great audience participation. People laugh at my, I'm talking taxes and money and people are laughing and having a good time. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah, it's it. And they, and, and I always ask for a volunteer and they walk away a little bit, a little bit richer when they volunteer with me. No, that's nice. Hey, you know, we want, we want to come see you speak now. (laughs) That's right. So if I say, Hey, I need a volunteer and I'm waving money, that's your cue (laughs) to come on down. (laughs) <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for coming on today and Thank you. sharing just a little bit about this. I mean, this is just obviously the tip of the iceberg, but yes. we can listen on Audible or any other uh, listening Platform. subscription service yep. yeah any of those platforms yeah it's yeah there, so. that's awesome yeah. yeah i love linkedin so we will find you and uh, links will be in description box below so everyone can get a hold of it perfect and thank you for coming on today and remember everyone stay magical my friends the zarlaquan indieverse